and help us answer these questions. So please join me in welcoming our panel, who will be discussing the state of women's health in urban India. First up, it gives me immense pleasure in inviting up on stage Miss Pooja Makija, India's lead health, have been very fortunate to have been looked after by her. So please give her a huge round of applause, Pooja. Please have a seat. Thank you for joining us. Next, we have Miss Yasmin Karachiwala, fitness trainer. Leading Bollywood names like Katrina Kaif, Deepika Padukone find a mention in her client list. Let's please give her a huge round of applause. Thank you for joining us, Yasmin. Can I request you to kindly take a seat? Our next panelist is Dr. Rishma Dhilan Pai, renowned gynecologist from Mumbai associated with Jaslok and Leelawati Hospital. She has experience in the gynecology field for over 20 years and will soon be taking over as president of the Federation of Gynecologists of India, an organization of nearly 33,000 gynecs. Can we please give her a huge round of applause? Thank you so much. Our next panelist is Miss Sairi Chal. She's the woman of today who's managing her household and at the same time running She Rose, an immensely successful organization. Can we please give her a huge round of applause? Thank you, Sairi, for, having, for being a part of our panel. Thank you so much. Last but not least, we have with us a Bollywood diva, an author, a wife, and most importantly, a mother. Please give a huge round of applause to our last panelist, Sonali Bendre. Thank you once again, ladies, for being here with us. It's a glimpse into the lives of women, many like us, who juggle multiple roles, but unfortunately, in the cycle of day in and day out of fulfilling their duties as mothers. And there are a few questions that I think we all would like answers to, especially from our expert panel. So let's get straight to our first question. Now, we all know that women ignore their health needs. But do they actually realize and acknowledge the same? Can we start with you, Sairi? What do you think? Uh, I do feel uh, women are last on their own list, almost every one of us. And uh, things take turns. You know, if something happens, then we, you know, make a course correction. Yes. But uh, if you ask a normal person, if you ask a normal uh, average Indian housewife, average Indian professional, no. OK, and uh, sorry. Uh, do you think that we realize this and still continue to do the same? Uh, or well, does it not even strike us? Well, subconsciously we know that we, we're not doing enough, but uh, we just fail to prioritize. We just fail to prioritize our own health and scheme of things, and we always find other things to put up on the charts, you know, kids, finances, travel, parents, family, work. Everything comes first except our own health. And we all do this, cutting back on our sleep, cutting back on our diet, not eating well, not exercising. It's just, the list is endless. Okay. Uh, Sonali, let's ask you. You've been in great shape, thank God, touch wood. You've run, done and juggled multiple roles. What do you think, uh, do, does the contemporary Indian woman realize that health plays a big part and yet we continue to ignore it? Uh, Shruti, I can say about myself, and that is, uh, you said I'm in great shape, which is what it looks like, not really, because I think shape is also about being fit, and yes. which I think I have a long way to go. Okay. It's not about being thin, so that's not the thing. I had great metabolism, it lasted me for a while, never went to the gym, but I, I keep saying that's a regret that I have. I should have paid more attention. Yes. And like I now keep saying, muscles are my best friends. I have to keep telling myself that I need to love them which I, because I don't have them and I need to work on them. So uh, again, like you said, and uh, I agree with Sairi, it was when I had my child yes. and all my old injuries. Um, I, don't, I don't think anybody really knows it, but most of my career I've danced on one leg literally because I've, I had had a knee surgery, never went through my physiotherapy and kept working through it all, thinking I'm invincible. I was, till it came to a point where I had the baby and then suddenly I felt like my joints were jellies. And I didn't know what was happening to me, I didn't know how to deal with it, my hormones were all over and, and this was happening to me. So suddenly I was so totally out of control, uh, where my body was concerned, where my health was concerned and that was a wake-up call. 
And I had to literally restart physiotherapy, learn to walk again, stand again in the correct posture because that's so important and we don't give it importance. Yes. We think it's the most normal thing. And like she said, it was when this happened to me that it was a wake-up call and I said, oh my God, I need to pay attention to myself. And that's when I started paying attention. And I feel I did leave it a little late in life. I should have done it earlier. Okay, well, like we can all just hope that none of us end up ignoring it long enough yeah. for it to become irreversible. Uh, talking about the next point, uh, since we have some amazing experts with us here, uh, why do women end up ignoring their health and what kind of challenges does that pose for their health in the future? Let's start with you, Dr. Pai. Physically, emotionally, uh, hormonally. So you start with a young girl who's just starting menstruation how her body changes when she starts menstruating. And then her whole youth, she goes through so many changes. She's, she may have bleeding issues. She may develop hormonal problems. Nowadays, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome yes. is so common. Thyroid issues are common. Uh, young girls, they are so sedentary. They are studying all the time or they are in front of the computer all the time. So physical inactivity. A lot of girls put on weight at this time. I see so many young girls, like on an average, every single day, one third of my clinic will be full of young girls coming with obesity, acne, facial hair, weight gain, period irregularities. So, so many problems which young girls face. And then this young girl, who's not really in perfect shape, goes on to get older, get married, have her children, completely unprepared. Nobody, practically nobody comes to me prior to their pregnancy saying that we want preconception advice. How should we change our diet? How should we change our lifestyle? Nothing. They just go become pregnant. And then through their pregnancy, they come for some, uh, you know, care. After which, then, you know, they're having their babies. They're running around. They are on least priority for themselves because children are important. As they grow older, 30s and 40s, so many problems, physical problems. They develop fibroids, endometriosis, diseases, bleeding problems. And all of this is neglected because because, you know, children are growing up and husband's busy. So everything is, you know, prioritized except them. And then perimenopause, menopause, for which they go in completely unprepared. So yes. unfortunately, the woman is completely unprepared at every phase of her life. And uh, she's receiving all kinds of, you know, changes are happening. And she's, she's not ready to fight any of them because she hasn't sorted herself out. She hasn't prioritized herself. She hasn't uh, looked for help. She hasn't gone to anybody for... Uh, you know, some kind of um, uh, information yes. or, uh, yeah, counseling, nothing. When talking about themselves and, like Sonali said, that being in shape doesn't just mean being thin, it also means being fit. Uh, I'd like to pose a question to Pooja, who I think is a person who's instrumental, but with unrealistic goals and without any sort of personal commitments. Pooja, what do you think that women who ignore their health in their early years or even more in, in their later stages? Well, to begin with, uh, I think when, when it comes to the diet or the meal plan for the homemaker or the mother or the woman herself for the home, I think there's just so much that she tries to juggle with having a different diet for her kids, which is very different from what her lean, fit or overweight husband needs and what her diabetic or cardiovascular disease father-in-law, mother-in-law needs that what should be her particular diet and what should she be eating is never given a second thought. Uh, whether it was the remnants of the bacha stiffin that, was, that yeah. became her lunch or it was I don't want to waste food so it was last night's meal that was her lunch. I think we all come with so much, so much on our plate that there's really not much nutrition we keep on our plate. We try to manage so many different roles and make sure that my child eats her two fruits of the day. I don't know how many women actually check whether did they eat the two fruits of the day. So I guess as, as doctor said, it starts very nascent when they are younger because nutrition was never given the importance. Um, but as our world has now become um, a media for social exposure and every woman or every person has become a celebrity in their own right and all of us have faces and facets to show about where we are and what we are eating and what we wear and where we party that now everyone has suddenly woken up to say hey I better look good yes. um, as Sonali really clearly pointed out looking good or looking thin is not healthy I can look uh, I can lose weight and lose all my health with it yes 
uh, or I can say I can do it the right way. But as a shortcut, and to those who have no time to manage what they need to eat because they have just so many things that they are otherwise juggling with, they do it ignoring health. So I think it's a cumulative role and a cumulative process that starts from the teenage years of ignorance, builds up to getting married and running on honeymoons, losing weight to wear that chanya choli and then wear the bikini on your honeymoon and then it all creeping in. <laughs> using pregnancy as a disguise to say I crave X and I crave Y. Uh, and then it all hits you later when you have ignored yourself and really, as she said, I love my muscle. Most women wake up when they have just so much body fat that their metabolic rate is down and under. So that's what hits it and once it hits is when... So, the, so I guess nurturing and educating about food, nutrition and importance of balancing the act of life and food yes. is, uh, is something that I think women, I think we are really taught to do a lot. I think as a child we are taught like how to be a good sister, how to be a good daughter, how to be a good wife, how to be a good daughter-in-law. But I don't think we are ever taught our relationship with food. Yes. Never taught what the proteins do for you, how essential the carbs are for you, what are the vitamins, where's the glow, where's the skin, how's the hair. Those are integral relationships with food. And if that is not taught, we stumble. Yes. And I'm not saying others, I would say everyone stumbles. Ignorant people as well as educated people. So people who have loaded fridges or people who have poor, no food. It's not the question of availability, it's the question of ignorance or importance that has not perhaps been nurtured. Okay. You know, talking about loving muscles, we should talk to Yasmin about that. You know, Yasmin, um, I shouldn't eat sugar or I shouldn't have dessert and I mustn't have a cola and I should be careful and blah. Exercise is something that almost a majority of women pay no heed to. They feel, okay, if we're eating right, then we're doing our part towards our health. Even if you're slightly inclined towards being fit, you'll probably focus on making sure that I'll eat my two fruits and I'll have my muesli and I'll do this and I'll have my milk, blah, blah, blah. But exercise, no, no, that's, that's not necessary. I'm eating right. Do you think you face a lot of people like that? Most definitely. I think most people relate exercise with men. And uh, what Sonali said about muscle, when you talk to a woman about muscle, she's thinking she's suddenly going to start looking like Salman Khan or <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, you know, they don't understand that it's not... I mean, theirs is a hypertrophy muscle, which is yeah. used, huge muscles which they require for the role. But muscle is very essential to your body because... Uh, that's what makes your body composition, the amount of muscle and the amount of fat that you have in your body. And muscle is what protects your bones as you age. Yes. And most women uh, post, as they grow older, are uh, more prone to being osteoporotic and, you know, get osteoporosis. And that is when muscle is what helps you, you know, which is what nourishes your bones. And muscle doesn't mean, like I said earlier, big bulging muscles. It's just muscles that your body requires in order for you to stay healthy and fit. And I do have women who come in because they know I've trained X, Y, and Z, and they want to train and they'll say, but we don't want to do strength training. We don't want muscles. We don't want to look like a man. And you know, I'm overweight and all my fat will convert to muscle. And that's, <laughs> I think I hear that almost every alternate day, my fat will convert to muscle. And fat cannot convert to, to muscle. muscle. <laughs> They're very different. You can lose fat and you can build muscle. And you can build muscle so beautifully by just doing body weight exercises. And so for people who come to me with fear of, you know, uh, well, building you know. muscles, I introduce them just to simple squats, wall push-ups. You know, things that are very gentle on your body and you're building muscle and explain to them the importance because... Women, as women, we are fabulous multitaskers. Yes. You know, ask us to play any role and we can play it. Absolutely. And ask us to look after ourselves and we look great in that dress or that little black dress. And like Sonali said, you know, jeans play a very, very important role with Absolutely. a lot of people. But as you grow older, 
time's going to catch up. Yeah, that's and I always tell off. my people who say, I eat anything, I don't do anything, but look at the way I look. I look good, I feel great. Why should I bother with my diet and exercise when I'm looking so good? And I'm like, well, dude, there is going to be a time when all these things won't help. And, you know, your gene. <laughs> my mother was really thin, and that's how I am. But, you know, after she had two babies, this is the way she's become overweight. I'm like... So you're going to tell me you're not going to have babies. And that's when your metabolism changes and you eat what you want and you crave what you want. And uh, you don't exercise because pregnant women are not supposed to exercise yes. is the myth. But I think it's beautiful to exercise throughout your life. Right. Eat right, maintain the diet, uh, you know, the balance. And, you know, if you're not getting enough nutrition, then find it from other sources. Shouldn't take too much time and does not interfere with their professional and personal commitments, in your I, opinion. I think uh, just knowing that balance is a myth, we're never going to have a perfect day, so we might as well prioritize uh, and be a little conscious about it and get all the help that we possibly can. Look at the amount. Hydrate, very, very important. Many of us forget the importance of water. And a dehydrated body does not only look older, it feels slower, sluggish. Um, so please make sure hydration is done well. And please, as much importance as you give um, the rest, the importance of food to the rest of the family, give a five minute thought to even what you're eating. Include fruits and vegetables, drink a glass of vegetable juice. It's very good for the way you look and feel. Um, and if there are needs or areas where they aren't. It's a big myth that nutritional supplements make you gain weight and they're going to make you more hungry. It's not. It's very essential. Even for those, I would think that I do take care of what I eat. I still feel that a nutritional supplement is essential and not taking one is not a good idea. Thank you. Uh, I think first of all, there's a little... Uh, I think a certain amount of thinking needs to change. Uh, we as women are guilty about everything. First of all, we feel guilty when we are happy, when we are sad, when we are... For everything, the first emotion that we feel is guilt. And I think somewhere that's there in our society, we are brought up, our subconscious is that, we are brought up like that. And we need to kind of bust that myth, we need to kind of stop that. As women, we need to do that uh, with daughters, with nieces, and you know, the younger generation that's coming up. So, for a small example, my mother wouldn't eat unless all her children had eaten, her husband had eaten and everything. My, what would I do? First thing that I do is, before I run behind my son, I have my meal because I'm irritable, I'm cranky. I'm prone to taking it out more on my husband and child because I'm irritable and cranky and hungry and my sugar levels are dropping. So, it's better that I have my meal first, I'm happy and I'm giving them more time. So, understanding the fact that just by not having the meal before the rest of the family, you're not really helping. You're actually causing harm. So just small things like that, which sounds really, uh, you know, minute, but I think is a huge thing, mindset, changing of mindset. And I agree with uh, Pooja when she says that, that, you know, the, we need to bust few myths. One was where the workout is concerned, where nutrition is concerned, about nutrition supplements gaining weight, no, you need it. We don't know what, are, what we are eating now. The nutrition is changing. The, the things that we eat are so different. Um, definitely, our grandmothers and mothers ate things and, you know, survived. And so we should also. But we live in a different world. We really don't know what's going into the food and what is it exactly that we are getting. So getting the health checkup so that you understand what's going into your body, what is lacking, and, and then tackling it by adding supplements is the best way to do it. That's Thank what you, I would Sonali. say. Yasmin? So I have a very clear funda, and I like to tell everyone, be fit because you deserve it. And I think as women, all of us deserve to be fit because we are the ones who look after our families and, you know, our husbands can do really well because we are there looking after the house and the kids and our parents rely on us because, like, my kids are teenagers now, but... Now it's the worry about the parents getting older and their needs. So we're multitasking and I think each of us deserve to be fit. And I have five very simple rules that I tell people and one of them is move. You know, we, are, we come from the animal kingdom, we are meant to move. 
Our lives are so sedentary now because we have cars, we have lifts, we have drivers, we have Ganga Bai getting us a glass of water and we're not even moving to the fridge to bring our own glass of water. And uh, all of us have mobile phones. Yes. And technology is wonderful. But when you talk to people, you can walk. Yeah. And I tell people, if you're not getting your exercise in the day, walk with your mobile phone so that you get moving and you, you know, you're not just sitting in one place and talking about different things or how your kid was, you know, throwing a tantrum in the night, walk. That's the most easy thing to do. The second thing, like Pooja said, is hydrate. And most people forget to drink water. You ask a woman or even a man in the night how many glasses of water and they can't account for it. And most of us go through our day without drinking water because we're so f busy making sure our child is drinking water. Yes. <laughs> you know, and uh, so hydrate. And when you're thirsty, your body's already dehydrating. Yeah. So don't wait till you're thirsty to drink water. Drink water before thirst strikes in. The third thing, thing is, eat smart. We all are smart, right? We make smart choices in life. And when it comes to food, why is it that we don't make smart choices? All it takes is planning your day in the morning, mentally thinking what you're going to eat through the day and making sure it's available. Yeah. Uh, most of us in urban societies have help. And it's not that difficult if you just take that five minutes to plan your meals. Breathe. Again, like drinking water, a lot of people are so stressed yeah. that they don't deep breathe. And if you spend five minutes in the morning just focusing on breath, forget even five minutes, just say three ohms in a day. Yeah. And you can, you know, get your breath because br not breathing leads to so many problems. Hypertension, you know, they, and I, I find that even in the gym, there are so many people who work out, but do they really breathe with their workout? They don't because they just want to work out and <laughs> run off. And so take the time to breathe. And the last thing is your attitude. Yeah. Okay, it's all about your attitude. I have no time for this. I have no time for myself. I have no time. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. But I can spend half an hour on, on the phone talking to my friend. So really, you do have time. And it's all your attitude. All it takes is to be positive and say, I can do this, and you will be able to do that. And like Pooja and Sonali said, you know, there are, I mean, food is so contaminated today. We don't know what pesticides are going in it. I, according to myself, eat a really, really healthy diet, but a food, uh, I mean, I eat my vegetables, I eat my fruits, but am I getting all my nutrition in? I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, just taking a pure nutrition supplement is not a bad idea. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the lovely panelists. Can we please give them a huge round of applause? And can I request you all to please take your seats in the front row? Yes. Thank you, ladies. Can I request you all to please take your seats? Uh, can we can we just finish? No, we have the rest of the event. How do we do this? <laughs> can I please request our team to clear the stage? find out. Uh, Sonali, what's your association with Revital Age Woman been like? And what brought it about, rather? What, uh, uh, well, 
I have a couple of stories that I always tell when I, whenever I talk about uh, uh, Revital Edge. And I like the fact that it's Revital Edge Woman. Yes. Because it's so important to understand that it's not just any supplement, but there are certain things that women need. Yes. And this supplement addresses it. So that was very important. Um, one of the stories that I have about this is that when, when I was approached for this brand, uh, I checked it out. My GP was very happy with it. He said, this is the best in India. Okay. And uh, I gave a few bottles of it to my mother-in-law, to my mom. And uh, it did help. And I, we tried it out. I've taken it. And I really feel this is something, we just had a panel discussion. And when Pooja spoke about, uh, you know, and uh, Dr. Pai spoke about young girls not really paying attention, uh, you know, when we are young, we feel we are invincible. Yes. But that's the time when we do need to pay attention to the nutrition and we need to change the mindset. We don't know what's going into our food now and it just helps to have that uh, amazing supplement going in and this helps that. So you have hormonal issues, you have various things that are happening, bodies are changing and this is the right time to get into the habit of you know, adding on. It doesn't take too long. It's just a matter of remembering to take that one tablet. tablet in. You know, it's the quickest thing that you can do and the best thing you can do for yourself. So it's not, it says woman, but I would say it starts from girls. And you know, okay. you have to start paying attention to health since then. And is there anything else that you'd like to share with us in terms of your stories that got you to sign up with Revital Age? And more importantly, like you said, a story that you'd like to tell people out there so that they can become more conscious of their health, be more responsible